salvation. We believe, God. We believe you, God. We believe you. Hallelujah. We stand here because we believe you. We stand here because you're a miracle worker. We stand here because we know you supply all of our needs. We stand here because we believe in you for our help, our strength. Hallelujah. Because in you we move. Hallelujah. In you we have our being. In you we live. In you we pray. We just believe you. Hallelujah. And that's why we're here today. That's why we show up. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, we just believe you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And because we believe you, we praise you. Because we believe you, we praise you. We act on it because we believe you. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Hallelujah. So we ask you to go into the homes. Heal sick bodies right now in the name of Jesus. Touch sick hearts. Touch hearts. Touch hearts that are depressed. Touch hearts that are confused. Touch those that are down in their spirit. Touch those that need comforting. God, you, you, I said, you, comforter. Hallelujah. And they speak to them. You are the comforter. You are the comforter. And so it is. You are the comforter. God, we ask you to come on. Shall come on thee and overtake thee. Oh, 
and thou shalt he hearken yes. unto the voice yes. of the Lord thy God. Oh, blessed shall thou be in the city, yes, and blessed yes. shall thou be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body, and the fruit of thy ground, and the fruit of thy cattle, the increase of thy king kind, and the blocks of thy sheep. Blessed shall be thy basket and thy store. Blessed shall thou be when thou comest in, and blessed shall thou be when thou goest out. Oh, ah. Hallelujah. Ah. 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 Hallelujah. 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 The word is word. blessed. Hallelujah. As we be hearers and doers, yes. hallelujah, of the word of God. Praise the Lord for one more time. We bless y'all. That's a promise. Amen. That's a promise. We bless. We bless because I declare we will hearken, hearken, unto the voice of the Lord our God. And because we hearken to the voice of the Lord our God, we are blessed. Yeah. We receive the promise. We receive it because we hearken. Hallelujah. Because we hearken. Hey, hey, I receive it. 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 Hallelujah. I receive it. I receive it in the house. Hallelujah. Anyone under the sound of my voice has received it. As you hearken to the voice of God, receive your promise. Praise God. We thank the Lord for one more day. Hallelujah. Our teacher is none other than our pastor of the Living Purpose on this morning for our wonderful Sunday school. Sit attentively. Hallelujah. As he comes, let's say amen. Amen. Pastor comes. Praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord. Can we thank God for his goodness? Thank God for his mercy. Thank God for the week of the sun. Thank God for that awesome prayer this morning. And that beautiful scripture, glory to God. What God would do for us, glory to God. And he was on conditions. The scene that it was, he made a condition. If he would pardon, but glory to God. And it shows all the things that he would do. How he would bless and bless and bless and bless. Lord, hallelujah. Lord, his word. What God will not turn unto him void. Glory to God, his word will do exactly what it's intended to do. Amen. Glory to God, and it is doing just that. And we thank Amen. God for the word of God. Glory to God. We thank God for each and everyone that's with us this morning and the ones that are coming on later. But we say praise the Lord to each and every line. We thank God for another opportunity to be, to be able to walk into the house of the Lord. Glory to God. Another opportunity to wake up. Probably on this side of the earth. Glory to God. Another opportunity to, to say yes, Lord. Yes. Another opportunity, glory to God, to get it right. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And you know, we don't want to take those opportunities. You know, so we, we get so busy, we get to going and we're doing this and we're doing that. Glory to God. But hallelujah, we don't want to take advantage of uh, take for granted the opportunity that the Lord gives us. Glory to God. We have uh, another, another beautiful lesson coming to you. And this is one that's uh, we are uh, for us around this uh, around this time of the season because we had we had our uh, as the Lord was uh, the trial our Passover. Glory to God. And, uh, we had, uh, for us, of course, on the last Sunday, as we had our Easter program, you know, for us as you know, the resurrection service, glory to God. But, but we still in that season, hallelujah. Even though we have given, you know, for us, they slowly, but we know Pentecost is on the way as well, glory to God. In 50 days is the Pentecost, glory to God. And we know how the church began on Pentecost, glory to God. So it's so much that we that we have uh, for us that for us the lessons that the different lessons that we have gone through that we have so much uh, that's able to different lessons are fit right on with uh, with the season the the time we in but this particular lesson that I was because uh, lesson number two and um, and it says covered by the blood glory to God 
covered by the blood. Aren't you blessed and you're thankful that God has covered, covered you with his blood? Yes, Glory yes. to God. It's a blessing that he covered us with his blood. Glory to God. Even covered, uh, covered by the blood of Jesus. Even when we're praying, we ask the Lord to cover us with his blood. When we ask to cover our family, we ask to cover our loved ones, our kids, our, our friends, our, our ones who, who partner with us and ones who fellowship with us. We ask the Lord to cover them with your blood. Glory to God. And this, and this week, we're going to be able to see what he was talking about when he says, covering with his blood glory to god and we and we talked about for us passover and passover is when uh for us when the, when the law say he will pass over glory to god he was covering the children of israel with his blood glory to god and we see where he was he told them to be you know to and, 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 and when they come out of egypt uh he told them to remember this day glory to god that what he had done for them how he had passed over them glory to god he covered them with his blood yes. glory to god hallelujah and i thank god hallelujah it didn't stop there glory to god he's yet covered with his blood glory to god and we see how uh the lessons going to get into for us how uh of course the covering of the blood of course they at that time they were taken they had set the animals were sacrifices and he used lambs and doves and used all different types of animals. And we see that in the first, this first particular time when they were coming out of Egypt, the Lord had them to take a lamb. And that lamb had to be a perfect lamb of God. It, you know, it had to be a perfect lamb. It couldn't be one with, with blemish and one that has spots. He told them to get, it had to be a perfect lamb to be sacrificed. And every time I think about glory to God, how many animals that died because of our sins, glory to God, how many, somebody had to die for everybody's sins. Some had to give up the, the ghost. Some had to give up life for something to live. Oh, and, then, and, that, and that poor innocent animal, glory to God, who knew, who, who, who even his uh, mother uh, birthed him, Glory to God. But he had to turn around and give his life for somebody to live. Glory to God. And they took the blood of that innocent lamb. Glory to God. And the Lord had them to take that blood and put it across the doorpost, as we know, on both sides of the door and across the top of it. And we know the story. And the Lord told them, when you see the blood, when you see the blood, he will pass over. Glory to God. So and so we know that for us and that in the Passover, like uh, for us, he was uh, that they would they they gave him instructions on what to do and how to do it. We went over this in one of our Bible school lessons, and it was and it was all and Moses they, uh, gave them the instructions and he told them and for us as they were as the uh, for us as they were in the, the house. He said, let him know to, know to do not go out of the door, glory to until the morning. Hallelujah. He said, and that's, and that's in Exodus 12, and it's in verse uh, 22. He talks about for us, and he, and he says, you, you shall not go out at the door of the house until the morning. Glory to God. And it was, and it was, they had to be in that house. Glory to God. And we know that not only was the children of Israel in that place, but there were ones that for some of the Egyptians was also in some of their homes. Glory to ones that they, even though they, they they might they probably they believe that they're God. They might have know of God, but they believe their God. Glory, they believe the God of the children of Israel. Hallelujah. They have seen the plagues. And at some point they say, I believe him. Glory to God. When you keep seeing all these plagues and you keep seeing people, the, the Lord will have them make uh, believers, the glory to God, out of unbelievers. Ones that say they didn't, they didn't think there was no God. After so many plagues and after so many things happening, after a while you say, I believe God. Glory to God. I believe he is real. Glory. So he was making believers at that time, even with, the, even with some of the Egyptians. 
Because some of them said, you know what, I'm, I believe what he did. He said that the destroyer is coming through. I believe him, and I'm going to see if I can get in one of these homes with the children of Israel. And you know what? The ones that got in there that, that humbled themselves, submitted themselves, and said, you know what? I ain't that big and bad that I think that I, I'm not going to try to test this guy. Glory to God. They humbled themselves, went into the house of the children of Israel. Glory to God. And because they humbled themselves and was in there, they too, the Lord passed over that house. Glory to God. My God, my God. And so, it, it, and, and, and the Lord is yet doing great things even to the day. Glory to God. We want to come on up. We know the Passover was that lamb. It was, at the, it was a lamb back then. Glory to God. That without spot and without wrinkle. Glory to God. A pure lamb. Hallelujah. But we know that our, our Lord, glory to God, we needed help. Hallelujah. We had sin all in us, around us, on top of us. Deep, 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 hallelujah, in sin. We needed somebody, hallelujah, to die for the sins of all our sins. Glory to God. We need forgiveness. We need somebody who was able to forgive. We needed somebody that would die for us. Glory to God. Hallelujah. My God, my God. And we're going to see that. that hallelujah. We're going to start in the, in, in the lesson that talks about the Passover. Where, where the Lord was started from, and then it comes up to the Day of Atonement. It talks about the Day of Atonement. We know that, hallelujah, for his own. He had one priest, hallelujah, that would, that would go into the holies of holies. And once a year, for the, for the be able to, to sacrifice animals, and but for the sins of their people. And we know that, the, for as that particular priest had to be right before God. We talk about it all the time. Of course, he had to be, they had bells to tie up to, uh, around him and a, uh, and a rope that was going out into the, into the, out of the holies of holies. So that way, and if, if for some reason, he fall down. They knew they're not going there to pick him up. They said they just pulled that rope and pulled him out and glory to God and have another priest eventually. But, but, but the sad part is, for that year, for that time, they missed Hallelujah. Well, their sins being forgiven. Glory to God. Hallelujah. It showed the pressure. You know, all that pressure, all that was on that one priest. Glory to God. And he had to be right before God, going in there to sacrifice him for his before, right before him. Glory to God. And so we know that, hallelujah, that the day of atonement was a day that, for as they was able to get their sins forgiven when the priest went in and they placed the sacrifices on the altar, glory to God. And only once a year, that glory to God, the day of atonement, and the atonement is that's at one with Christ, glory to God. And so, so and that was what my opportunity for them to, the, the sins, and they had at that particular time, a, a scapegoat as well. And the scapegoat, they would put the sins, attach the sins to that sca scapegoat, glory to God, scapegoat, and they would let him out into the woods, never to come back again. Glory to God. Is that what the Lord does for our sin? We forgive our sins. He take them and put them in the sea of unforgiveness. You don't see them anymore. Glory to God. And so he has, and everything's types and shadows of the Old Testament, New Testament, where we are now. But we, but he used the scapegoat, glory to God, to allow the sins to go, get, go out. And that way they were able to get back close with the Lord, build their relationship back up. It was hard for them to build it. They couldn't build it back up as long as that sin was in the, in the way. But when, this, when, the, but when the law allowed for them to have the scapegoat to send this, uh, to attach their sins to that scapegoat, now they was able to be able to build their build their relation back with God. At the same time, they had a sac another another sacrifice that actually another animal for them that got the sac had that sacrifice. So you had two. One was a scapegoat, and the other was an actual sacrifice. Glory to God that actually died. For their sins. One died for it, and the other one, they took the sins and attached to him, and as they said, set them out into the woods, never to return again. But then that was the order God gave them how to forgive sins. Yes. And again, this was talking about the, you had the Passover, you had the Day of Atonement. That was the Day of Atonement. And glory to God, then we're going to see how that it comes up to for us when the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He looked everywhere. He could not find somebody else. Glory to God. To come and die for the sins. So, hallelujah. He was ready to do away with all these animals. You know, and 
and I can imagine he, you know, he was tired of seeing all these animals. It's just like a slaughter, glory to God. And here it is, it, it went over and over, year after year, and month after, even throughout the year, there were sacrifices of these animals. You can imagine the animals just dying off. Dead everywhere, glory to God. People making sacrifices, but I thank God, hallelujah, glory to God. As we come up to the New Testament, we know that He became our Passover, glory to God, the true Passover, the true Lamb of God, yes, without yes. spot, without wrinkle, yes. without any such thing, glory to God. He came, glory to God, and offered his life. He came down, glory to God. He came down from heaven. That's how much he loves us. He came down from heaven, glory to God. Hallelujah. Made himself a body, hallelujah, to be able to come and to die. He now, oh my God, and die for us, glory to God. That's how much he loves us. He already knew when he came what he was going to do. He knew that, hallelujah, we needed that Passover. Glory to God. And it couldn't be anybody. Glory to God. It had to be the true and only, glory, and only God. One without sin. Glory to God. One without any, any defects of any any problems at all but we thank god that he came and he died for us glory to god and so here it is and the letter the lessons talk about being covered by the blood so we know that his blood is yet running glory to god hallelujah glory to god that blood hallelujah glory to god the blood that saves us the blood that delivers us hallelujah glory being covered by the blood, just like he had the animal's blood that, he, that, that the, the lamb back in the Old Testament took and put across the doorpost. Now this blood, hallelujah, when the blood is applied to our life, hallelujah, glory to God. When we go down in the name of Jesus and we rise to walk to the beauties of life, and the Bible tells you, you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, glory to God. Hallelujah. Just like he told them back in the Old Testament, when I see the blood, I will pass over. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So as we as he see the blood, because as we as as we as he turns our life around, as he saves us and look, fills us with the gift of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. He said, when I see the blood, hallelujah, that's a mark on his child. When I see the blood, glory to God, he I will pass over. Hallelujah. And so he's yet, glory, the blood is yet running glory to God so we so the blood is applied to us hallelujah as, as we live for the Lord but aren't you glad that you are covered by the blood glory to God hallelujah glory is a listen and we see how it would have and we, even when we're standing in the Old Testament we see that the Passover how with how they the people with the different ones that was Egyptians in the Israelite homes glory to God even today hallelujah my God when you got when, when God has a person that he's using mightily glory to God a child of God. People would be blessed just from being in contact with that person. Glory to God. There are people that there would there are jobs that are being held up. I mean, they are not before they would before they would do, do away with the company. Just because that child of God is in that place, glory to God, God would turn around and allow that place to sustain that place because of that individual. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He oh, because now if, if he's covered by the blood, but wherever he's at, glory to God. Hallelujah. A lot of times it's just because of that individual, the Lord will protect the different ones as well. He would, and the people be thinking that, oh, well, no, they, the company is around because, no, uh, it's because of that individual, that one little individual that you overlook every morning, every day, <laughs> that you might even talk bad to. That individual that's on that knees praying saying, Lord, forgive me. Lord, forgive them. Glory to God. That's not only praying for themselves, but praying for people at that company. Glory to God. So, oh, Lord. But we're talking about covered by the blood. And we're going to let you the lesson I said says in the, in, in the lesson uh, was in the outline, the practice of Passover. It says in number eight, though Israel was captive in slavery, God brought about their deliverance. And it says, Brother B, I will have peace because Jesus' blood protects my life. It says in the Roman, Roman 2, Jesus died at Passover. You see that the first one says the practice of Passover. The second one says Jesus died at Passover. 
and number, and number eight says, though humanity was captain and slave to sin, Jesus brought deliverance. And B, I would actively, actively thank him for the forgiveness of sin. His blood produces freedom in my life. Freedom from penalty, power, and practice of sin. It says, I will, B says, I will live above power of sin in my life. Glory to God. We're going, going on in, in, in further in the lesson, and we're going to see the lesson connection. Uh, it's a very obvious, a lot of these connections are uh, special, very good. And this is one for as a young lady, the husband was, uh, was um, for us in California, when the, when, say, when the, when the gold fever broke out, and, and when he was looking, when he started doing well, he, he left, he left his, his family in New England. And so he was, and once he started doing well, he was going to send for them so they can come on and join him in the course in California. Glory to God. And it seemed, and at, at some point he, he got, he was, uh, he was doing it well enough. You know, it says here, a long time passed and he still had, he hadn't struck gold, made enough money to send for them. So he hadn't struck gold, but he made enough money to send for them. And it says his wife's heart leaped with joy. She took their own, their son to New York, boarded a Pacific steamer, and sailed away to San Francisco. They had, they had not been long at sea before the cry rang out through the ship. It said, fire, fire. Gunpowder was on board, and the captain knew the moment fire reached the powder, every man, woman, child would perish. The ship crew broke out the lifeboats, but the boats were too small. In a minute, the lifeboats were over. The last boat was just pushing away when the mother pled, pled with them to take her and her, her boy. They replied, no, we have as many as we can hold. Glory to God. And she begged them so much until they finally agreed to take one more passenger. She held her son in her arms, gave him one last hug, kissed him, and dropped him over the burning ship into the lifeboat. She cried out, my boy, if you live to see your father, tell him that I died in your place. Glory to God. Oh my God, just right there, you know, you see for us, you know, you're just following this, this uh, lesson connection, the story here, you see the mother, how um, you know she loved her son. And she was willing, she knew that if there was only one seat left, enough for one seat, only one place, only one person. And here it is, she loved her child enough that she kissed him, hugged him for the last time, and turned around and put him in that boat, that little boat. And she turned around and told tell your father that I died in your place. And when you think about this, like, like this connect, this, this part here, because we know that's what our Lord did for us. Hallelujah, glory to God. We were, oh, you know, like a lifeboat, hallelujah. We we needed, you know, we it, it was the emergency, but the urgency was just like that. Hallelujah. And he was willing to take and die for us. He's the one that would the same another example is that if someone is getting ready to get shot, he will stand in front of you and take the bullet for you. He was willing to die whatever it took so that you may live. And here, and I love because, and, and here's, he did it because he loved her. You know, that mother loves her child, and she took him hugging for the last time, and she knew she wasn't going to see him again. Lord, but we thank our God, though, hallelujah, because he loves us enough, even though he died, yet, yet he lives, <laughs> glory to God. And we yet, glory to God, he saves us and delivers us and fills us with the Holy Ghost. We can be able to see, see him again. Glory to God. We see him because he's in us. Glory to God. But 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 I love it because this uh, this these lessons of Saint schools, these awesome teachers and uh, uh, that, that that they have for these books. 
and that man loving how they break it down and give it so vivid it gives you allow you to be able to see for us that's how much our lord loved us too glory to god he was willing to die that we may live and it says here as the preacher the last paragraph from west connection as the preacher el moody shared that story he gave the following altar call that is a faint type of what christ has done for us he laid down his life for us he died that we might live now will you not love him now will you not love him what would you say of that young man if he should speak contemptuous of such a mother she went down a watery grave to save her son well shall we speak contemptuous of such a savior may god make us loyal to christ my friends you will need him one day you will need him when you come to the cross the swellings of Jordan, you will need him when you stand at the bar of God. May God forbid that when death draws nigh, it should find you making light of the precious blood of Christ. Glory to God. My God, my God. And we hear, and it is that serious nowadays, even all the things that we're seeing, I, I, as much as that we, was, we went through as a, as a nation, in the last couple of years, as much as we went through, hundreds of thousands of people died in a matter of a couple of years of because of the, because of a virus, because of the, because you know. And here you're talking about all these things that we see. We see the world shut down, which we never seen before. I seen planes looking like a parking lot of cars. Airplanes. I've never seen that in my life. I look on the news and you see airplanes parked. I mean, literally parked like a, like cars would be at a, at a dealership. These were planes. They were everything stopped. The Lord has a way. He can stop this world. He can stop every movement. Glory to God. But I thank God, like I say, for and, and after seeing all of this. And thank God that he would like to say for us, you know, that for us that, you know, for us how like all what was going on, he yet uh, kept us. There was ones that lost their lives and yet praying for the families that lost their lives. Because a lot of people, everybody was affected in some kind of way that knew somebody who died because of this virus. That's how it was, it's just that close. And it's still, Lord knows, a virus is still lurking, it's still there. But we thank God that God has allowed for us to allow scientists or, or, or the different doctors or different ones to be able to come up with a vaccine. And we know that that ain't nothing but God. <laughs> God already had a remedy for the plan already. But we thank God that He allowed it to come up with something to be able to help. And, you know, to help. But I, my point I was making that after all this we see, after all that's going on, you think every church in, in a, a forest, in, up and down, whatever street you live on, you think every church will be filled up. You think every, you think people will be running into the household of God, saying, Lord, what must I do to be saved? Lord, keep me. Glory to God. You think people will be running in. After 9-11, people were running in. Glory to God. It, 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 and what happens is it starts off for maybe a minute or two, and then people get relaxed and get restored to the back and all. But in this case here, we know that a lot of a lot of our lessons on Zoom and, and different things. And it's sad to say, it, it, as much as Zoom helps us, but some, some it has made us lazy. It has made us where instead of me getting out of my clothes and getting up and getting to the house of God, I can turn on, I can, I can just sit back. And, and so some things have made us more relaxed. And so, but we don't want to wait. The man said right here in the, in the last part, it says, he said, you will need him when you stand the bar of God. May God forbid that when death draws nigh, it should find you making light of the precious blood of Christ. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We don't want to wait until it has to, that you need him. Glory to God, you want to be able to continue. You want to be able, as you, as you have the strength, as you have your right mind, serve him. Glory to God. Give him, give, give him what, what is due. Glory to God. Hallelujah. But we're we going to go further in the lessons. 
And we're talking about being covered by the blood of Christ. Glory to God. He's yet covered us with his blood. Again, he was that, 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 that one and only perfect sacrifice, perfect Passover. And, and even though that's going to let you know, it says like in the Passover, glory to God, because he, the word Passover came because the night when he passed over is glory to the Israelites. Glory to God. So Bible, so we don't help each other this lesson. Glory to God. Uh, 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 go to um, it says the practice of Passover. As we age, we tend to think more about dying. It says he pleased the eyes of eight days. Means there is no man that have power over the spirit to retain the spirit. Neither have the power in the day of death, and there is no discharge in that war. We all will face death one day. That, re that reality cannot be avoided. It says, we can only imagine how prisoners on death row feel when facing an execution day. The other hopelessness would be beyond comprehension. But imagine the overwhelming exhilaration if they were told someone else had volunteered to die in their place. The prisoners know they are guilty and will die for their crimes. Yet some stranger has stepped in and assumed their crimes and the penalty that goes with them. That means the actual guilty one will go free. Through a substitutionary death, the guilty is now declared not guilty. Glory to God. The practice of Passover. It says, the children of Israel may have experienced a piece of this feeling every Passover celebration. They knew that sin had broken their relationship with God. They realized that they were guilty and deserved to die. Without a payment for their sin, they could only look forward to death. Hebrews 9.22 declares, and almost all things are by the law purged with blood. And without the shedding of blood is no remission. If no blood was offered as a sacrifice for sin, their sins would not be remitted. Glory to God. And we see here, glory to God, that again, the leaders give us such a, a vivid uh, point for us about the, the ones that's on death row. You can, you know, so you can imagine, like I said, a person when he's on death row, they know they get ready to die. And we have seen where the different ones, they had a matter of hours before if, if the government, if he doesn't get a pardon, and they're going to execute him. It's just, and then turn around and we heard stories where all of a sudden somebody came in at the last second and the government maybe pardoned him. Glory to God. But we have a God. Glory to God. We thank God for Jesus because when we know we were guilty of, of, of sin, we know it, it wasn't imagined. It wasn't a thing of, I think I was guilty. But you knew you were guilty and you needed someone, glory to God, to step in. Hallelujah and, and, and save you. Glory to God. And so here it is. Again, this was another vivid you know, illustration that by you see that for us how they needed when they were right at a point of getting ready to die and needed someone to keep hard now. Glory to God. And, and not and not everybody just gonna step in and repent. They might love you, and they, but but this the Bible will tell you very few will will, will even die for us. <laughs> so but we know our Lord, glory to God, was willing not only to die for one, but die for all, glory to God. He was willing that, that all, none should perish, glory to God. So we thank God for, for not just not just talking, but he actually did it. He stepped in and, and died that we may be able to live. And number eight, he says, though Israel was captive in slavery, God brought about their deliverance. Israel lived under bondage to the Egyptians. They spent 430 years in captivity. Far removed from their homeland, each passing day brought a greater sense of hopelessness. Most likely, there were days they wondered if God had forsaken them and left them to die in Egypt. But they were God's chosen people. He was not about to leave them or forsake them. To effect their release, God sent Moses and Aaron to the house of Pharaoh. To man, he let God's people go. Time after time, Pharaoh refused. 
With each refusal, God sent him a new plague to convince Pharaoh to free the Jewish people. At the first Passover, God instructed the men of each Jewish household to kill a young lamb or goat that had no defects. Each family was to roast and eat the sacrifice. And leftover meat was to be burned. They were to eat fully dressed with their sandals on and their walking sticks in their hand, ready to go. Glory to God. And we know that's exactly what happened. Some of the lamb's blood was to be taken and smeared on the top and sides of the doorpost of each home. The marking of that blood brought the true meaning of Passover into their lives. It says on page 60 at the top, it says to deliver his people, God went throughout the land of Egypt. If the blood was not applied to the home, the firstborn of every household would die. God promised Moses, when I see the blood, I will pass over. Hence the term pass over. God passed over the lives of those marked by the blood of the sacrifice, thus sparing them from death. It was understood there was no deliverance without the covering of blood. The morning after that first Passover, Israel experienced a peace they had not felt in years. They were no longer captives, they were free. Glory to God. It says, and for me, I will have peace because Jesus' blood protects my life. We can experience that same peace and freedom today through Jesus Christ. While sin has wreaked havoc in our lives and kept us bound, Jesus shed his own blood to bring us peace. Isaiah 9, 6 promises that the coming Messiah will be the Prince of Peace. Jesus is indeed our peace. To better understand how he is the Prince of Peace, let's look at another Old Testament feast, the Day of Atonement. It is the highest holy day on the Jewish calendar, during which the high priest offered a sacrifice for the sins of the people. That sacrifice reconciled the people to God. Then the high priest released a goat into the wilderness, symbolizing the carrying away of the sins of the people. That was that scapegoat. This scapegoat would never return to the camp of Israel. One could say the sacrifice of atonement restored the broken relationship between man and God. It also brought peace to the relationship. The Hebrew word for peace is shalom. It means wholeness, completeness, and a sense of permanence. Jesus took that which was broken and put it back together so again. So atonement is taken that which was broken and bringing it back together to one again. That is exactly what Jesus did. Through his death, burial, and resurrection, he set our broken relationship with him at one again. It is comforting to know we have the Prince of Peace, no matter what circumstances life might bring, like bring our way. Jesus shed blood brings peace to the turmoil in our minds and spirits. Because Jesus was our atonement, his sacrificial blood paid the penalty for our sins. And we live with a peace far greater than anything else in life that ever bring. Romans number two says, Jesus died at Passover. We see here the chorus that I get that Jesus come on our perfect Passover. It says, for Israel, Passover was not to be a one-time event. The Lord commanded the Passover to be observed on an annual basis. Exodus 12, 3 through 6 was the beginning of the instruction for Passover. Speak ye all to all the congregation of Israel, saying, in the tenth day of this month, that should take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for a house, and if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next unto him, uh, into his house, take it according to the number of the souls. Every man according to his eating shall make the count for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. You shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats, and you shall keep it until the 14th day of the same month. 
And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel should kill them in the evening. God never intended for Israel to only celebrate Passover during their deliverance from Egypt. Exodus, lessons 12 and 25 and 27, lets us know they were to observe Passover in the promised land. Every sacrificial animal pointed to the ultimate sacrifice, Jesus Christ. He will be God manifest in the flesh to redeem all humanity. Jesus will carry all the sins of the world and pay the payment to bring remission. Glory to God. And we know that He is the one that paid a ransom of the price that we owe. Hallelujah. We needed somebody to make, make up the pay for the ransom of Christ uh, for, for our sin for us, that we for something that we could not even afford to pay. We needed somebody, hallelujah, to pay the price. Glory to God. Uh, we couldn't afford to pay. We couldn't even. Uh, we couldn't even. We could. There's nothing we can do. Period. Glory to God. Even if we had the money, yet couldn't pay it. Glory to God. We needed somebody that can pay the price. Hallelujah. And the Jesus was the only one that can pay that pay that price for our sins. It says, in the year Jesus died, the Jews again celebrated Passover by killing their lamb for the temple sacrifice. During the normal celebration and offering, they missed the fact that Jesus died as a final sacrifice of his own. When he cried from the cross, it is finished. He was declaring an end to offering blood sacrifices for sin of the people. He, he did it once and for all. It wasn't a matter of you know, like you, know, you had to come back and forth and back and forth just like the animals, like constantly. No, it was one time and one time only. Glory to God. That shows the power of glory of our Lord. Oh my God. He could do it one time. He was a one, uh, he was a one and only sacrifice. Pure blood. Glory to God. Pure lamb. Uh, hallelujah. Only taking one time. Now, glory to God. So what he did with what he did was not, it was the past, present, and, and future. Because we know when he died, he got he went through the grave and talked to the ones that was. That, had, that was sleep. Glory. He went down and talked to them and allowed them to hear the word. Glory to God. So it, 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 whatever, it, it covers all errors, past, present, and future. He took care of the whole thing at one time. Glory to God. That's what I love about God because he's a one time, one, a one, just a one shot. Glory to God. One stop, one shot. <laughs> He could do it all at one time. Glory to God. He's not, you know, it's not like you got to keep going back and forth for this or that. Everything God does is well done. Glory to God. It's well done. So he doesn't leave anything, you know, for us with, you know, you got to take care of this and take, no, when he does it, everything is done. It's done. Glory to God. When he, when he blesses you, when he's when he, when he helping you in your life, he, he, he didn't touch, he didn't, he didn't work out all the corners. Everything is connected to you. And so you find yourself, when this is, when he's doing this, he, this is taken care of. He allow you to go over here, this is taken care of. Glory to God. It just, it just, everything is done. You don't have to be figuring out what else is left to do. Glory to God. It's all done. Glory. And so, um, we are on Roman number two, number eight, on page six. It says, No humanity was captive and slavery to sin. Jesus brought deliverance. Year after year, year, year after year, sacrificial lambs were offered at Passover. Year after year, the sin died. That's year after year, the sins of the people were rolling in anticipation of the arrival of the Messiah. When John the Baptist saw Jesus, John declares, Behold the Lamb of God, which taken away the sin of the world. Paul wrote to the church in Ephesus, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. These verses of scripture and a merit of others all point to the fact that Jesus Christ was our atonement. We no longer bring a sacrificial lamb or goat to present to God. Instead, we point to Jesus Christ, the Lamb that took away the sin of the world. By his death, he delivered the world from the bondage of sin. His death, burial, and resurrection allow people to find a way through the new birth experience to truly be free from sin. Glory. And he says, I will actively thank him 
for the forgiveness of sin. Although Passover had somber overtones, it was a time of rejoicing for the people. They expressed their gratitude to God for forgiving their sins and allowing them to move forward in their relationship with him. The incredible sense of thanksgiving, the thanksgiving filled them. By living a life pleasing to God, they were actively expressing thanks to him. Our lives, um, our lives should be the same when we understand the incredible price Jesus paid to forgive our sin. We should be filled with gratitude. Every day we live should be a day we thank him for the gift of forgiveness. Glory to God. Aren't you glad? Aren't you thankful? Glory to God. And just like every morning you wake up, every day that he gives you, allows you to wake up and you have breath in your body, aren't you grateful and you're thankful? Glory to God. Not just to be in your right mind, but just thankful that you have a relationship with him. You're thankful that he has saved you. You're thankful that he has turned your life around. We thank him, hallelujah, that you have an opportunity to go back with him. Glory to God. Aren't you you're grateful and thankful at one time you woke up, you didn't know him. At one time you woke up, you didn't even know what the day was going to bring. But glory to God, but you wake up and you're grateful and you're thankful for all that he's doing in your life and how he keeps on doing more and more great things. Hallelujah. It is a greatness that's been, hallelujah. You are grateful and you're thankful. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Glory to God. When everything else seems to be falling apart around you, but you're grateful and thankful that I know him. Glory to God. Because as long as I know, we, we said it for us about the hope. He is the hope. As long as I know that he lives. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And because he lives, he hallelujah. Because you know that he lives in you, he gives you another opportunity another chance and you know hallelujah that I that of course I can make it not because of you but what he does. Praise the Lord. I'm going to use that phrase give them forgiveness. If 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 people actually look at it as gifts um and repentance because you can't have a gift of forgiveness if there is something for repentance because he 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 could only die to give to you know Like it's like it's like us 
you sweep yourself under the rug after a while, it trips you. You <laughs> keep walking, just trip right over it. You know, he got that you have to you have to get rid of this part first. You already got it before you can even before you can't ignore it if it's not even there. Thank you, man. There's some orange hair hand up as well. I'm thinking the scripture, page one, I found that I'm very
Second, the people walk into their tomorrow without weight of those sins. They experience freedom that can only be produced by the sacrifice of atonement. When Jesus died in Calvary, forgiveness was provided for all the sins of humanity. Glory to God. Secondly, when he had, when we have had Jesus' blood applied to our lives through the new birth experience, God grants us freedom we have never felt before. And A says, freedom from the penalty, power, and practice of sin. From the beginning, God told us that the penalty of sin is death. The soul that is sinned, it shall die. However, because Jesus Christ willingly suffered the punishment for our sin, the penalty of our sins were ever removed from our lives when we are born again. The Apostle Paul lets us know that the blood of Christ has destroyed the power of sin in our lives. He spent the entire seventh chapter of the book of Romans telling the power of sin in our lives. He was quick to tell us that neither the law of God nor our conscience can deliver us from the power of sin. And it says the struggle is real. <laughs> Glory to God. The struggle is real and the battle is intense. The only real victory and power over sin is through the blood of Jesus Christ. Glory to God. Oh, glory. Because it's, as you know, the struggle is real. And when Paul said, you know, man, several times, I, you know, how you, you, know, you find himself doing this, but don't want to do this. It, the struggle is real and the battle is intense. The only real victory and power over sin is through the blood of Jesus Christ. It says, I will live above the power of sin in my life. Ultimately, how we live our lives is our choice. Every day we will make choices throughout the day that will be a testimony of how 
we have decided to live our lives. Paul began the eighth chapter of Romans with these words. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. And it says here, the power of the spirit becomes the source of our strength. As we live for him and walk in the spirit, the desire for sin will fade away. The closing, the closing verses of Romans 8 are so powerful. They testify that nothing has the power to separate us from the love of God. Glory to God. And we can get ready to the end and it says eternal lives and the message. It says one of the most hopeless places on earth will be death row. The cells might only be eight by ten feet. Crammed into a small cell is a dead toilet desk. A few inmates also have the desk and a chair shoved into their limited space. Their cell is about the size of the average bathroom in your house. Lord, can you imagine? That's the, imagine living. That's how you know you come out of like the bathroom in your house and it's kind of a bed uh, um, and all your sink and a toilet all in one room. Their cell is about the size of the average bathroom in your house. Imagine having a bed, toilet, sink, desk, and chair all shoved into a room approximately the size of your bathroom. And you're locked in there for 23 hours per day. Physical activity is limited to sleeping, showering, and perhaps a feeling of this room. Some prisoners and prisoners allow an hour or so for exercise from the prison board. Average length of time in prison live on death row awaiting execution is more than 15 years. Okay. Shockingly, 40% of these inmates have been there over 20 years. It has become common for prisoners to die on death row from sickness or other natural causes. While the physical routine should be maddening enough, we can only imagine how terrifying the mental anguish is. Living every day knowing you are condemned to die for a crime you committed. What will your thoughts be with each passing day? Would you hold out hope for your last minute stay of execution? Would you dream about the governor of your state issuing a 11 59 p.m. pardon? We all have been living our lives on a spiritual death row, glory to God. We are guilty as charged. Like all of us, we have sinned. We are condemned to die for our sin. But from time to time, we dream about it finally being set free. We long to break out of the prison of sin. Yet, no matter how much we dream about it, there seems to be no way out. There is no last minute reprieve or pardon. It seems we are destined to die in our sin. Until now, according to 2 Corinthians 6 and 2, now is the day of salvation. Jesus Christ has stepped into the prison of sin in our lives and offered to take our place. He has already died so we can live. He became bound to the cross so we can be spiritually free. His atoning sacrifice at Calvary covered our sin. We can find our way to freedom through repentance and have our sins washed away by being baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then we can become new creatures in him by receiving his spirit. Jesus removes the condemnation of sin by allowing us to walk in the spirit. The results in us never being separated from the love he has for us. What amazing love he died for us so that we can live. Glory to God. My God, my God. Glory. You like what you mean? Yes. 
the enemy knows that he's coming back for us over time. So we as saints of God have to realize that we're not gonna live without a battle, without a without uh, uh, something coming at us. So we have to make decisions to not uh, compromise. We have to make decisions to to stand regardless. We have to make these decisions because Jesus is coming back for overcoming. He's not coming back for people that just never had a battle or succumb to every battle. Every battle comes because it was hard. He just gave in because he hated it. He hated it. He's about now. Because that's what our flesh is. Can you imagine every time something comes at us, you just take the easy route? Take the easy route. Just take the easy route. Where would we be if, you know, because the enemy comes and he tells his flesh, it's easier to say no, it's easier to say yes, or it's easier to do it anyway. It's easier. And if we just gave in to everything that the enemy brought to appease us, where will we be right now? You understand what I'm saying? So, so Jesus coming back for overcoming, not somebody that hasn't had struggle, not somebody that hasn't had a battle, because the struggle is real. But we are overcoming. He's that overcoming. You understand what I'm saying? That's what he's coming back for. The ones that overcome. Amen. Amen. I love it. And, and, and I love it because you know when you were talking. And true enough, too, when you're running away from whatever it is, you know, you know, to me, whether you think it's easier to not do this versus do something else, a lot of times you can be with that thing you think is easier, you didn't run into something else that you were at, and you didn't add in something else. <laughs> and you're thinking that I'm avoiding this to go instead of because it's easier, but yet it's taking you further away from where you should be going. And now you add something else on top of it at the same time. And so the easy is not necessarily easy. It, it, it added more and more. And like I say, so that is so true. You know, you, and versus just, you know, the hard thing. The hard thing. It's easy. A lot of people want to avoid the hard thing. It's true. Sometimes you don't like, uh, what's that? Uh, uh, um, you know, when you have to uh, correct people, or certain things are correct, do this or that. But some, it, the hard thing, and as a, as a supervisor, you as a supervisor, you got to, you have to, when you see something, and you have to correct it. Because if not, it's going to get worse. And what do you do? You find yourself, you, you know, you have to do that as hard as it is. <laughs> because that's why they put you there as a supervisor. And, you know, and, and, and but you see, doing the hard thing, the person get it, and then they finally, you know, that now is able to correct the error, you know. But it was a hard thing because it was within you saying, I got so hard for you to do. But then once you got over it and did it, and you find yourself saying, oh, well, I'm glad that you did. So, so, but the easy thing, yeah, you, you, it's just, you know, you, you, the hard thing, sometimes you gotta take, you gotta push through the hard, get, but it, it's worth it, it's worth it, it's worth it. And I wanna read this, but by Paul, was Paul was saying in the seventh chapter that you mentioned this, this it says here in verse uh, 40, in the chapter 7 of Romans, verse 14, for we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, so in the sin. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that do I. If then I do that which I would not, I consider to the law that is good. Now, now then, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. For I know that in me that is my flesh dwell in no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. For the good that I would, I do not. For the evil which I would not, that I do. Now if I do that I would not, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. I find in a law that when I would do good, he was present with me. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man, but I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind, and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. O wretched man that I am, 
who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I thank God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So then with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. So, you see, Paul had it right there. That's, you know, that's that struggle within, you know, and, and it's real. It's, it's real, glory to God. But it shows that, Lord, thank God for the power of the Lord, power of the Holy Ghost. Thank God for, the, for his power. That, glory to God, say, oh, wretched man that I am, who can deliver me from the body of this death? I thank God, Jesus Christ, our Lord. So thank God for Lord, but his covering. It is God's. We thank God for his blood that covers us. And that's covered by the blood. Glory to God. There's nothing that we have done in some is thank God for the blood that yet covers us. Glory to God. It's that perfect lamb that died. Glory to God. And allow us another opportunity, another chance to get it right. Glory to God. And we thank God for his covering. Oh um, my God. Covering us with his blood. Lord God. This time we turn it back and set hands on your leg be feet. And we're going to get ready to dismiss. And this time you are in her and the hands on your leg Praise the Lord. Say amen for the lesson on today. Praise God. Covered by the blood. We thank the Lord for providing it. We, we, we you know, like we said earlier, we look at things as gifts. He gave us the gift of the blood where we can be covered under it. And he, when he said we can have it, he did, he, we, our flesh makes things difficult. But God provided it. Whatever we need is already provided. We just got to receive it and walk into it. Thank the Lord for the lesson on today. Um, and may it be a blessing to all of the hearers and as we take the word in and apply it to our lives. Like we stated earlier, the word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Knowing that you're covered by the blood adds a little, uh, uh, adds more faith. It's because your protection, you can, you know that you can deal with things because the blood of Jesus is covering me. I can go through and make it because the blood of Jesus, as Pastor stated earlier, because he lives. Hallelujah. Because he lives, I can make it. Praise God. Praise God. We're still on that. That's, that's not going anywhere. We're still on that because he lives. Because he lives. All the challenges that I go through, it can be worked out because he's the one that works them out. As I submit, he works them out. Praise God. But, but we said it earlier, the struggle is real. The struggle is real. But I'm an overcomer. I am an overcomer. And especially because I'm covered by the blood. Praise God. We get ready to dismiss. Praise God. And there are refreshments, as we always say, there every, every week. <laughs> there are refreshments in the uh, kitchen. We will be back in morning service at 1130. Please, and whoever's online, come back and join us at 1130 and see how God takes us further into the service as we go up in the anointing. We expect to great things in this service, so we, we want to approach each service with expectation because we come in with expectation, and when we come in with expectation, God fulfills things. Hallelujah. Because we look at form. We look at form. And he does some wondrous work. So God bless you. We're going to stand and be dismissed. Praise God. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. God bless you. Lord, we'll see you back at 1130.